So I'm going to talk a little bit about proficiency-based progression because it's quite an important topic in the modern day uh, assessment and training of students in surgery. I'm not going to go through all the literature and the evidence, that's not for this course. I, this course is about telling you the facts, but if you're interested in the subject, there's a lot of literature out about it at the moment. To understand what proficiency-based progression is, you need to understand the difference between competency, which is the ability to do something successfully, and proficiency, which is the ability to do something to a high degree of skill. So if someone is closing the vault of the vagina, if they take forever and they're dropping the needle and they finally get it closed in a slightly ragged way, they're competent if they're not being dangerous, um, but they're proficient if they do it in a slick manner with well-placed sutures and a tidy end result. Um, so there is a difference between competency and proficiency. And the evidence now really suggests that you should be splitting a task up into different subtasks and you should be proficient at one of these subtasks before moving on to the other. Now this is quite a busy slide and I'm sorry if your, uh, you, you, your, your computer screen is too small to read it. But these are the tasks that we at CERGS put together as the agreed task for performing a hysterectomy. It was put together at Adelphi. Um, we have actually looked at these tasks again for a number of other subjects and um, uh, there is a, a new set of tasks which is going to be coming out in a more um, collaborative way with another set of organisations. But this one is a good example of the tasks that we feel you have to achieve to perform a hysterectomy. So you have to place the uterine manipulator, you have to put the trocar in, you may need to perform an atesiolysis, you then need to dock the robot, you then need, may need to do even more atesiolysis and mobilize the bowel. Uh, we then have dissection of the tube if we're preserving the ovary and transection of the ovarian ligaments. Of course, that would be the infundibular pelvic ligaments if we were taking the ovary. We would then have transection of the round ligaments, dissection of the bladder peritoneum, transection of the uterine pedicles, mobilization of the uterine pedicles, vaginal circumcision around the colpotomy cuff, normally might not be a colpotomy ring there, removal of the uterus, suturing of the vagina, de-docking and removal of the instruments, and suturing of the skin. And what we're saying is, is that you shouldn't be putting in a trocar unless you're proficient not just competent, but proficient at placing the uterine manipulator. And you shouldn't be placing the trocar until, um, you shouldn't be doing an atesiolysis until you're proficient at placing the trocar. Concentrating on one skill, reaching proficiency of that skill before you can go on to another. And there's good evidence that in fact, you reach the level or standard required to perform an operation quicker if you do uh, a proficiency-based um, uh, progression model. In other words, you progress to the next step once you've reached proficiency in the first one. So there just needs to be a little module now just to talk a bit about that, but that's the end of this module, and uh, um, uh, it's just an, an important fact that we felt required a little bit of concentration on in a module of its own right.